The famous Black Mountain College was in Black Mountain, North Carolina. This school only ran from 1933 to 1956, but it changed the worlds of art and education forever. Black Mountain was very isolated, which aided in the ability for the students and faculty to be their own little unique society, safe from the rules and regulations the rest of the world demanded. It was founded by John Andrew Rice and Theodore Dreyer, and was itself an educational experiment stemming from the progressive movement and John Dewey's philosophies of education. The Black Mountain College addressed that the arts are essential to human understanding. They taught that there was a link between school and society, and that there should be more of an emphasis on each individual student rather than on the subject matter. This facilitated a learning-by-doing attitude that the college took on wholeheartedly. The stress upon these creative arts brought a unique collection of students and faculty to Black Mountain College, including many now-famous artists, musicians, and poets such as Robert Creeley and John Cage. The campus itself was actually tended to by faculty and students through a work program. This was great at keeping everybody involved in the upkeep of the campus, which gave the students more respect and pride for their surroundings. The work program was mainly due to lack of funding by the state or by private investors, but ended up being very beneficial to all who got involved. Here the students are helping to tend to the farm fields on the campus grounds, proving that Black Mountain was very self-sufficient and able to survive despite the lack of support from many. In fact, there were actually two campuses for the Black Mountain College. The first, Blue Ridge Campus, was used from 1933 to 1941. It was actually owned by the YMCA and was very formal despite how progressive of a movement this was. The imposing Robert E. Lee building you see here is what held all the classrooms, as well as all the housing for students and faculty. It had an expansive porch and a grand hall that were both great for gatherings, and these became meeting places for students to socialize. From 1941 until 1956, the Lake Eating Campus was used. It was only a few miles away from Blue Ridge, but was much more rustic than the formal campus. It was actually first used just for summer sessions, but was winterized in order to be used for the whole year. Students and faculty built a lot of the buildings around this lakeside campus, such as the studies building you see here. This was one of the centers for life around campus, where most students and faculty would gather for classes and activities. At this campus, buildings such as the studies building were designed much more for functionalism than beauty, which went along with the Bohas movement. Here we see some faculty that worked at Black Mountain College. A great deal of notable professors passed through the walls here. They were very unique individuals with unconventional views on education and art. But despite the more relaxed conditions at Black Mountain, the professors here challenged their students a great deal, expecting as much passion and originality from their pupils as they were putting into their classes. The famous poet Robert Creeley actually taught at Black Mountain and was a huge role model for many of the students. He was a huge part of the Black Mountain Review, which we see here. This was a magazine that was created to refine post-war poetry and add the feeling of Black Mountain progression to the world of poetry and literature. But Creeley's first day as a teacher didn't go very well. He was so concerned about what to actually teach his students that he just lectured them, unsure of how to really teach people how to write. But soon enough, his classes became more engaging, and he recognized all of his students as brilliant and impressionable. John Cage was a revolutionary musician and also taught at Black Mountain. He got involved in all sorts of art as a child, from painting to writing, but people seemed to like his musical abilities the most, so he stuck with that. This man believed that public schools ignored many needs, and that the students at most schools were forced to do their work, rather than allowed to pursue their passions the way they could at Black Mountain. Cage found dancer Merce Cunningham and painter Robert Rauschenberg at Black Mountain, and together they formed the first performance art ever. They used sounds from nature and everyday noises to make music, altering instruments and amplifying recordings of basic sounds of a door creaking or feet scuffling to make a soundtrack to this performance art. Here is a clip from one of Cage's performance art pieces where he collaborated with Cunningham and Rauschenberg. Classes themselves at Black Mountain were very free-form, but demanding as well. The students had to take responsibility for their own educations. This required total commitment of emotion, intellect, and creativity. 
students could enroll in art classes, music classes, writing, and design classes, along with many other options. The basis of the lenient curriculum at Black Mountain was the idea from John Dewey's philosophy that one should learn by doing, and that society and school should be closely linked in order to produce well-rounded students, teachers, and human beings in general. Classes were often held outside, and students actively participated in creating art together, learning from each other, and learning from experience. Here they are working on geometric design, another subject that many students studied. Black Mountain College was divided into two tiers of learning, which were based off of knowledge and readiness rather than age or years spent at the college. One could move from the junior division into the senior division by passing a difficult oral and written exam. Seniors would focus their studies in one area, which allowed them to qualify for graduation. But in order to graduate, the students actually had to pass more difficult exams that were administered by an outside specialist in their focus area, which made it difficult for them to actually complete their education and graduate from Black Mountain. Robert Rauschenberg, who we know became a professor at the university, was actually a student there first. He remembers being very challenged by his professors, but enjoyed every minute of it. One student once said, if you didn't bring something new to every single class, a new idea or piece of work, you just didn't want to show up. This kind of attitude proved very successful for many students as they became masters of their art. As hard as they worked, the students get, did get to enjoy their time at Black Mountain. They had costume parties and many played sports out in the fields. Mostly interested in football, the students turned these games into almost a satire, simply playing for fun and exercise rather than having a winner and a loser. They also gathered often to listen to radio updates with information from World War II. Another innovative aspect of Black Mountain College was its integration program. Edward Lewinsky started integrating African Americans into the college in 1944, and while they were certainly a minority, they were never segregated or discriminated against by the other students or faculty. In April 1947, the Freedom Riders actually stayed at Black Mountain overnight while they were passing through North Carolina challenging segregation. Women were also a very integral part of the Black Mountain experience. They got involved in performance art and created many masterpieces while continuing their studies and making a name for themselves in the male-dominated society. In fact, very few students actually graduated from Black Mountain College, but luckily those who went on to other colleges had no trouble transferring. Their education at Black Mountain counted towards transfer credits, solidifying how many people actually accepted this movement as legitimate. Many students who graduated or transferred went on to be famous artists, playwrights, musicians, composers, architects, business people, and many other things. Unfortunately, by 1955, it was becoming a ghost town. Due to lack of funding, so much social change, and the already significant financial instability of the college, it began falling into disrepair. Students began neglecting the grounds, and everybody, students and teachers alike, were miserable. Many of them turned to drugs and alcohol for relief. But Black Mountain College didn't have a particular style. It was more of a point of view. It made people realize that the arts are, in fact, critical to a well-rounded citizen. But possibly more importantly, it influenced the whole educational system of America and proved that the arts had to be included as an integral part of the curriculum, creating an example for schools today like Prescott College and the University of California, Santa Cruz. Without the progressive approach of Black Mountain College, it is irrefutable that our nation would not be the same in the realms of art and education.